Now what's going on? So for this video, I'm going to be showing how to get an HDR image out of your Unreal Engine 4 environment. So it's real simple, so it's going to be a pretty quick little video. And uh, let's get to it. So first thing is, like, I loaded up the Unreal Engine uh, Reflection Showcase. I like this map a lot. It's got a lot of information going on. We push G on my keyboard to show game view. But definitely has a lot going on. There's tons of lighting information as well. And uh, light just gets to bounce all over the place, which is great for an HDR image. And I think it's just a cool environment overall. But to use this environment as an HDR, first thing we need to do is we're going to go ahead and we need to create a camera that needs to capture this environment as a 360 sphere for the HDR image. So first thing I'll come down is I'll go up to my modes tab and what we can do is under classes we can do search and we can just type in capture. And our seed capture cube is the option you're going to want to use. Just go ahead and click and drag and drop that in the middle of your scene. Because I'm in game mode, I can't see it. Let me go ahead and push G to bring everything back. And I got a lens flare going off the camera there. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring this up to the middle. And I'll show you in a second why I was doing that. And from here, we need to get a image information from this camera into a actual viewer. So within the content browser or anywhere you want to build within your files, go ahead and right click and go ahead and come down to materials and textures under cube render target. This is the one you're going to want to use to get that information from the camera. So go ahead and click that and you can name this anything you want. I'm just going to leave it default for right now. And it's going to be a green texture and this means it has no information available right now or the information is just not up to date. So we're going to go ahead and we want to go ahead and drag this over to the texture target with the camera selected. So go ahead and drop that in and you can see it here but if you want to see the full beauty of the, the shot, the HDR, you go ahead and double click and you can see what your HDR image is going to look like with your environment. Now we know we, would want, we want this to be as big as possible for our HDRs because I want all that information to be usable in my other applications. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the size up to its max, and the max is 2048. I might be wrong about this, there might be other adjustments or other ways you can get to higher resolutions, but for 2048 it's pretty good for right now. Again, it's going to have to be up refreshed and updated, so just go ahead in your content browser with that texture target cube, just go ahead and drag it back over to that camera again, and it'll update that information. Now let's say you want to adjust where this camera is taking this photo from. Normally you think you'd have to delete it, you don't have to do that at all. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to the drop down arrow within our viewer, lock the viewport to our scene capture camera with the camera selected. And that'll lock. So anytime we move, the camera's going to move, updating this on the fly in real time. It's definitely handy for getting the right shots and the right areas for what you want to get for your HDR image. I'm going to keep this relatively within this, this, uh, the center of the scene and I'm going to keep it between the ground and the ceiling. Uh, best way to do is just kind of do a visual eyeball of uh, how much information the floor is taking and the ceiling is taking for the background. So too much of the ceiling if you're pretty close, pretty far down to the floor. So I mean this is pretty good right here. So with this image, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save that. And I want to come down to the render target cube. I'm going to right click. I'm going to come up to create a static texture. What this is going to do in the next minute is it's creating a 2048 image with HDR information into the image. Now I just realized I made a mistake and forgot something here. I'm going to delete that texture that just got made because I apologize for that. What I didn't do was I came down to compression. It's on default. We want to make sure this compression is on TC HDR. Again, we got to do an update. I'm going to go ahead and right click and create a static texture. Now, with that TC HDR drop down now put in there, now it's going to respect the lighting information that's coming from this image. So, from what this image now made, I can go ahead and right click. I'm going to take asset actions. I'm going to go ahead and export this out. And it's going to export it as an HDR image. 
Now you can save this, to, well I have this going to is my desktop or anywhere you need it to go and I'm just going to call this reflection capture. For the reflection capture environment. It's going to go ahead and export out our image and now we have a 2048 HDR image made. At this point you can open it up in any external image editing program or any program that accepts HDR images. So one thing I know I'm going to do is I want to adjust this image because it looks pretty dark. So I'm going to open up Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and I want to open up that HDR image itself. Take a look at it. Go ahead and close that new. Let's hit open. There's our reflection capture HDR. Go ahead and open that up. And now, in the next second here, hopefully, our HDR image is now loaded. Now it does seem pretty dark. Um, I really can't see anything of what we had took a screenshot of. So I can come up to image, I can go to the adjustments and the levels. And I'm going to take all that information that's over here, I'm going to drag this on over to the left side. Brighten up that image overall. So now we can see the rest of our environment in there. I'm going to go ahead and save this one out over the old one we did. Normally you say you want to keep the older one. You can do that if you chose to use, but I can, I can make these on the fly pretty easily. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the one I had earlier. Now let's say I want to build a character for this environment and I want to get him with PBR or physically based rendering, respecting this environment lighting and everything that's exposed to it. Now I'm going to come down to Substance Painter, which is a program I use quite often for doing PBR texturing. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up a sample file that comes with Substance Painter. And the guy I want to open up is I'm going to open up the uh, Samurai guy, or the Cry Samurai. Because this guy has got a lot of middle surfaces, he, so he bounces the light around, bounces the environment around, which is awesome. And it's a great example to show off like how the images will work. So we can come and hold down shift and drag and we can see the environment bouncing around. If we want to see the environment he's actually reflecting, we just got to turn up the environment opacity and the viewer settings. And now we can actually see the environment that he's bouncing around. And again, we can always change out the image by going to the environment map, panoramas. Just hovering over will bring up a, a little bit larger image with the description of the file name underneath it. So we can go down to like an outdoor environment selecting that and we can see how the HDR is going to reflect off our character and how our character is going to reflect that environment back or respect it depending on its roughness and metallic values. So let's go ahead and load in our HDR image that we made. So from our file I'm going to come down to import image. I want to import that HDR. So then open. It's now loaded into our library of our textures as well as it'll go to environments since it is an HDR image. So load this into the background so we can see it previewed in real time on our character. I'm going to go down to environment map. I'm going to hover over where I think it is and that's our reflection capture environment that we had done earlier. So selecting that, our HDR image is now being viewed within Substance Painter. I'm going to go ahead and drag my shelf over to the side so I can get some more viewing space here and we can see how exactly this character may look within our environment that we captured out with it using the HDR camera in Unreal Engine 4. So hopefully that helps and you guys can start whipping out a bunch of HDR images of your environments and using them to what you need them for for your characters. So.